Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support I received from you. And as always, all the information in my videos is rumors taken from the internet or the street, I'm not saying the information is fact. The Story of No Limit Pharaoh, Trench Gang In a side note, in February, Black Mob took revenge on ABK for their alleged involvement in the murder of Shooter Shells by killing P Don from ABK. P Don was killed in a drive-by attack while sitting in the back seat of an Uber in the 7400 block of South Stony Island Avenue. The one pushing the trigger was allegedly shot he hit from Black Mob. Two weeks later, No Limit took their second loss for the year. Two weeks later, no Limit took their second loss for the year. Adolphus Ford, also known as Dolf, was a NLMB member from the 2015 to 2019 generation as I call them. Basically the group who put in major work during those years as I told you about earlier. Dolf was out walking in the 8400 block of South Brandon which is territory belonging to Bush Kings who are allied with No Limit 083 who have conflicts with NLMB. A car drove past and an unknown offender started shooting at Dolph who was hit multiple times all over the body and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. There are two different theories about who was behind Dolph's murder. The first theory is that it was Lakeside and Boomin in particular that killed Dolph. If this is true, I think there is a high probability that Lakeside somehow got the location where he resided since Dolph lived only a couple of blocks away from where he was shot. The second theory says that Dolph was killed by some unknown offenders he had gotten into a conflict with earlier, allegedly after trying to buy lean and rob them. Dolph was a known robber and I actually believe this theory more than the one about Lakeside and Boomin. Kill a day from NLMB, who was Dolph's right hand man, even stated in a Facebook post that Dolph was not killed by any enemies and that any enemy that's mocking is doing it for clout. Just like with the murder of Ace, the murder of Dolph had a big impact on Pharaoh since he stood him very close despite the age difference. Four months later, Pharaoh would upset another close friend, Lil P, who was even closer to him than Dolph since they were the same age. Lil P, whose real name was Pierre Williams, was walking in the 6900 block of Southeast End Avenue when someone in a passing beige colored van opened fire towards him. Lil P was hit in the groin and was taken to Cumber Children's Hospital, where he tragically died. There are several interesting details about this murder but firstly, the set and killer who was responsible for the murder was allegedly Jack Boy Lil Don from Pax, town. This probably shocks some but according to insider sources it is true and they even remember how much Lil Don boasted about the murder after it happened, not on social media, but in conversations with other members. An interesting detail is that Lil Don got his car shot up while driving only a month before allegedly killing Lil P. 
Who shot up his car is unknown but my guess would be that it was Small Town and that Lil Don later slid through and shot the first member he spotted which happened to be Lil P who was affiliated with Mall Town. As I said previously, Lil P was killed in the 6900 block of Southeast End Avenue which is the territory of Mall Town and was also only a block from where he lived. Mall Town and big parts of the East End are cool with no limit. Even Moose Block despite them claiming Lil Piz City which honors the fallen member Lil Piz from Pocket Town, who was shot and killed by Sircon City gangsters in March 2008. Now many are probably wondering how these relationships go together as Pocket Town and No Limit are sworn enemies. There is actually a reason for these connections between the East End and NLMB. LPC, which stands for Lil Pez City, is the same for Pocket Town and the East End. They honor the same member, just to make that clear. However, Lil Pez left Pocket Town to hang out with East End shortly before he was killed by Sir Khan City. This is the reason why both East End and Pocket Town claim LPC. However, many from Pocket Town were mad about him leaving them for East End. It is only the members from Pocket Town who stood him very close that claim LPC and honor his name annually. After the murder of Lil Greg in January 2021, East End cut off Pocket Town entirely since a lot of members from East End grew up with Lil Greg and therefore picked no limit side in the war, however without participating. There are still a few Pocket Town members that are cool with a few East End members. There is no war going on to my knowledge but the tension is high as they feel like they picked an LMB's side. This is something to really look out for, the tensions could quickly turn to war, especially if shorties getting on each other's nerves since neither of them have any relations with LPC. But that East End shorty steady hanging out with no limit members. This situation could easily turn ugly but at this time, with most of the pocket town members locked up. I don't think they could afford a war with East End and the same goes for East End who have enough on their plate with their conflicts with Pax Town, 800 and Taekwon World. For those of you who don't know what East End is, it's an alliance including 4 sets, Ghetto World and Moose Block who claim 4.C.H, Mall Town who claim GD, and Guop Gang TTD who claim BPS. Lil P had been very close with several East End members which is the reason why East End and No Limit 4 years later went on a hit together and killed Lil P's rumored killer which we will come to later in the story. No Limit is especially close with Guap Gang TTD which is the set the talented up and coming rapper Kobo 75 claims, and who were very close with Pharaoh from Drench Gang. TTD, which stands for Train to Drill, and who by the way technically isn't included in the East End Alliance to be precise, they beef heavily with Raw Town, who are allied with Death Row 085, who is heavily at war with NLMB. They are also at war with Pax Town for obvious reasons, but also Sircon City Gangsters which goes back to the old days with Moose Block's war with them. Those three are basically the main enemies, the conflict with 800 and Taekwon World is very new due to East End's relations with Melly. Many members from East End, such as Nooch, who was killed in July 2022 by Trigger from Rotown, 
was very close with Drilla and Melly from 051 and was also part of the Melly Way movement who was at war with Taekwon World for killing Melly. Just like I mentioned, the conflict with 800, who were allied with OTV and Raw Town, is also very new and the conflict stems a lot from different relationships that both sides don't like. East End doesn't like 800 because they are allied with Raw Town and 800 doesn't like East End due to their relationship with 757 due to the Melee Way movement. That's the simplified explanation. Then there are a lot of other details behind it which I could go through in another video. Recently, in September 2022, 17-year-old Lil Ye from East End was brutally killed with shots to the face. This is a kill that 800, Raw Town and OTV have heavily claimed and much indicates that they actually did it. However, Maneski from Mall Town recently called them out for false claiming. Me explaining these relationships is for you to understand the underlying reasons for incidents later in the story since like I said earlier, four years later, DTD, who were basically Gao Op Gang's Drench Gang, would ride with Drench Gang and take out Lil P's alleged killer. No Limit have no problem with East End beefing with Sircon City since No Limit's relationship with them doesn't exist anymore. Maybe a few old heads are still on good terms with each other. The younger No Limit members have even had tensions with Sircon City since they are more cool with East End. That's is another thing to look out for. No Limit have already declared war with Paxtown due to the murder of Lil P and due to No Limit, with the help of East End. Killing Lil Don in July 2022, there is a high probability that No Limit could get into it with both 800, Sircon City and maybe even Taekwon World due to these relations. We have already seen tensions between No Limit and 800 where both sides are trespassing each other's territories to mark their presence. However, 800 and No Limit are two gangs with huge respect for each other. They know the other side is dangerous. No Limit have single-handedly taken out Black Mob, KTS, Lakeside, MTG and Pocket Town. They are backed up with money and crazy amount of members. 800 is also a wild set that beefs with everybody and has only lost a few members. However, I'm quite sure an LMB is too big a challenge to take on, even for 800. Death Row is the only set I've seen terrorizing No Limit. 800 could take on No Limit but if only with the help of Death Row and Raw Town. At least that's my belief because we have seen No Limit make set after set go extinct. We have also seen small tensions between No Limit and Taekwon World. Members of NLMB were even mocking LC leave him blind after he was killed in September 2022. Only a few hours after Lil Ye from Mall Town was killed which could be a coincidence, but some believe that it can be connected. However I've heard that trigger from Raw Town backdoored LC. No limit getting into it with Sircon City could happen but I don't see it as very likely, Sircon City already has it tough as it is. They have their own war going on with each other and on top of that the conflict with East End and Pocket Town. That cash they need to stop. They can't post up on their block. TTD a permanent stop. Who are up who are not? Who are all the way to go? You got the news that they got. Can't go out late. Can't go.
Now back to the story, Lil P was truly a beloved member but also a hothead. He was close with the whole generation of No Limit members coming up right now, especially Pharaoh, Bru, Lil Ro, Twino, Jada Jada, and Lil Lost. It was these younger shorties who were closest to him who created Lil Pville to honor his memory and still does today. However, the losses did not end for no limit. Just one week after the murder of Lil P, Mad Max was shot, allegedly by Hal Rell from Lakeside, who is currently serving a sentence for manslaughter. Those who have seen the story of Mad Max know that he was pronounced dead exactly a month after getting shot and that he snitched on Hal Rell during interrogations led by police while laying on his deathbed, drugged out. I personally don't believe Hal Rell was the actual killer. Both sides have basically said that he was not responsible. In a live stream on Instagram, Hal Rell even said that while in county the first time after the murder, he told No Limit members that he was innocent in which they responded with, We know you didn't do it. The real killer responsible for the murder of Mad Max is rumored to have been Michi from Black Mob, but that Hal Rell was present. If it's true, it was of course an act of revenge for the murder of Shuda, Shells. Many of the younger people looked up to Mad Max and had great respect for him due to all the work he put in. Max literally carried the whole no limit on his back between the years 2012 to 2018 so you can certainly understand the impact this had on both the younger members and the older ones. The younger ones felt that it was now their obligation to put in work in the name of Max, Lil Gage and Lil P. Now we come to No Limit's fifth and final loss of the year, G Red from NLMB, cousin of Varu from Drench Gang, Lil Gage and both J Dots from NLMB. G Red, whose real name was Terrence Brooks, was walking in the 2400 block of East 75th Street when he was suddenly shot multiple times by an unknown offender. G Red was later found by authorities with a gunshot wound to the head and right shoulder and sadly pronounced dead at the hospital 20 minutes later. There is a lot that is interesting and unclear about this murder. Firstly, G Red was killed in black mob territory which is also where he resided. Secondly, it has long been rumored that it was Jaro City who killed G Red as an act of revenge for Archie from Jaro City who is rumored to have been killed by NLMB in late December 2014. For those of you who don't know, Archie was a member of Jaro City who was shot and killed in MTG territory in 2014. Archie was in an Audi SUV together with Kobe from Jaro City when a tire suddenly blew, they therefore drove to the nearest tire shop to get it fixed. The reason why they were in MTG territory is because that's where Kobe resided. While inside the gates of the parking lot belonging to the tire shop, 
two offenders, dressed in black from top to bottom and wearing gloves, ran up and started shooting. Archie was hit in the back and head and fell face down towards the ground. Kobe was shot in the leg but luckily managed to run away and take cover from the flying bullets. The ones responsible for this have rumored to have been NLMB, however, I'm not sure if I believe these rumors for numerous of reasons. However, I've talked with initiated sources who told me that other members have said that it's false that NLMB got him but that they are aware of the rumor. Back in 2014, the first rumor on the street was that it was MTG who got him, but that turned out to be false too according to members. After that, there have been rumors of 600 and a number of other sets. Archie himself wasn't a factor in the street and when members get killed in locations far from their own hood there is often confusion about which gang is responsible. This confusion is something many gangs took advantage of as it was not obvious which gang the shooters belonged to, therefore many gangs have claimed Archie's death, which confuses the whole thing a lot. I just wanted to put this disclaimer out there, but also point out that the main rumor is that it was NLMB who was behind it. However who got G red is unknown and I have a hard time believing it was Jara City. The whole rumor that it was No Limit who killed Archie actually started on the internet, only about an hour after the murder, Cairo tweeted to Motor from Jara City, asking, y'all good fool, in which Motor responded with, you ain't do none, turn up time. Not long after the murder, J Main from Jara City, who was very close with Archie, also started dissing No Limit in songs and social media. To clarify, there had already been tension between Jaro City and No Limit before this murder, Motor had been dissing No Limit a lot on Twitter and was even tweeted a picture of him being outside Lil Greg's house, and telling him to come outside. That particular incident confuses me as Lil Greg actually was the brother of Sun Sun from Jaro City, Cairo also has some relatives from both Jaro City and STL slash EBT. Much of Jaro City's issues with No Limit began with No Limit's relationships with 600 and Oblock. In February 2014, G Herbo even collabed with Boss Top, Rondo No. 9 and D Rose on the song Zico Pack, which led to many upset voices on the South Side, not least among the 5 1 Young Money, STL slash EBT and Jaro City. This also made KTS upset against 600 as Zico was the cousin of KTS Vaughn. Lakeside and KTS even slid on 600, DHF 46 and the block after this. You can say that No Limit and 600 exchanged further wars with each other, No Limit got 600's enemies and KTS got Jaro City's enemies. Now we leave the year 2018 and instead enter the year 2019, a very busy year, not least for NLMB. Namely, 2019 was the year when the war between Death Row 085 and NLMB broke out, several bodies would be dropped and the war was mainly between young up and coming members. Now it was the new generation, with Pharaoh, Lil Ro and Twano in the front, 
who would begin putting in heavy work on the east side of Chicago. The war between death row and no limits started with the younger generation from both sets teething at each other which later led to fights, shootings and eventually murders. There were fights where Jono from death row beat up Tuan, then Pharaoh and some other no limit beat up Jono. Surrounding these fights, there was allegedly some snitching going on which worsened the conflict. On April 3, 2019, Death Row drew the first blood on No Limit by killing Scooter from No Limit. Scooter, also known as Boom Boom, was out walking in the 8500 block of South Exchange together with two other men, both 18, when two males with dreadlocks walked and fired at them. Scooter, whose real name was Levon Hill, was shot in the face, neck and chest and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. The two other males who were walking with him were also shot. One of them got hit in the leg and the other suffered serious wounds due to being shot in the face and shoulder. Miraculously, both survived, despite being listed in serious condition. One of the alleged shooters was J Money from Death Row 085. J Money was later arrested on September 29th the same year for one of the attempted murders and is still locked up in Cook County awaiting trial. Two interesting details about J Money is that he is the younger brother of Hal Ralph from Lakeside, who is currently locked up for the murder of Mad Max from No Limit. Secondly, J Money is the cousin of Lil Hot from Drench Gang, both share the last name Cunningham. A lot of Lil Hot's and J Money's family is also relatives to KT Estray which could mean that Lil Hot is related to KT Estray whom he allegedly killed together with other Drench Gang members which we will come to later in the story. Another interesting detail about the murder of Scooter is that he and his friends were shot in the middle of Death Row territory, their main block. What Scooter and his two friends did there is unknown, but it is not uncommon for members to get killed in enemy territory while lurking for enemies or trolling on social media. The second shooter in the murder of Scooter is unknown, however it has been rumored that the person claims MTG. The mockery of Scooter flooded on social media after the murder, not least by J Money himself and Savo from Death Row. Just three weeks after the murder, J Money uploaded Facebook posts where he wrote, If your homie wants a ride, tell him to go get a scooter, and, I get that call, I'm there in minutes, which is the lyrics from King Von's song, Twin M. Savo, who was not only a shooter but also a rapper, mocked Scooter in the song, 85 flow, with the line, J Money say let's boot up, smoking on a whole bunch of Scooter. Savo also uploaded several Facebook posts where he disrespected Scooter. No limit on the other hand, they were out for revenge. The day Scooter was killed, Pharaoh uploaded a Facebook post with the following message, We got you dog. However, it wouldn't quite turn out the way No Limit intended. Later in the summer, Death Row would score on No Limit again and just two days later, Pocket Town and KTS would score. Of course, I'm talking about the murders of Willie and Magic from NLMB who was killed two days apart. However, before we get to that, I just want to clear up a rumor about a body that was dropped just two days before Willie was killed. Previously I have claimed that Pharaoh was involved in the murder of Mook from Death Row. This is false despite NLMB claiming the body. According to new information I have received, No Limit falsely claimed the murder of Mook and that it was actually Moe's from 89th and exchanged together with No Limit 83rd who killed him. I have also had this confirmed from multiple other sources. Pharaoh was therefore not responsible for this murder.
Just as I previously mentioned, in the summer of 2019, Death Row would score on No Limit again. On August 10th, Willie Washington was standing on the sidewalk in the 7800 block of South Phillips Avenue when a vehicle pulled up. Two males got out of the vehicle and shot Willie multiple times in the head and upper body. I actually remember when this murder happened in particular, not only because of the picture of Willie laying bloody on the ground, which Des from Lakeside posted on Instagram, but also because of the fact that we who follow the Chicago drill scene, instantly knew Death Row was the ones behind the murder. The reason why we knew this was because of all the self-incrimination that flourished on social media instantly after the murder, not least by one of the alleged killers, Savo from Death Row. The second shooter was allegedly BD from Death Row slash Buff City who was also later arrested and charged with the murder in January 2020, but was later released due to lack of evidence in March 2022. The driver on the hit was allegedly Fat Lord from Death Row who was rumored to have talked a little too much to the police regarding the incident and the incident with Arrow which we will come to soon. Members of No Limit, such as Pharaoh, have mocked Fat Lord by calling him the Rat Lord. However, members of Buff City such as C. Murda and Fa Fa Fa, who is the brother of BD, claim that Fat Lord is not the one snitching. Fat Lord is currently locked up in Cook County awaiting trial without bond. Death Row themselves actually don't even know who is snitching. It has been confirmed that Willie was BD's first body on No Limit, however not his last. I have also been confirmed that Willie wasn't an active member, members of No Limit have stated that he was kind of innocent. However, he was still a legitimate member and a beloved one for that matter. He was mourned by everyone, not least by the new generation coming up at the time. The witness to the murder, who is unknown, said he was driving BD on an uncharged co-offender on the night of the shooting when he heard them say they were going to slide, which prosecutors said he understood he meant, to just shoot anyone they saw. When the three saw Willie walking toward the bus shelter, the uncharged co-offender told the driver to turn the car around and circle the block. BD, armed with a handgun, got out of the backseat of the car and fired seven to eight shots directly at Willie then ran back to the car. As BD was returning to the car, the uncharged co-offender, who is rumored to have been Savo, got out of the car and approached Willie, who had fallen to the ground, and shot him in the head several more times, prosecutors said. Responding officers found Willie face down in a pool of blood, and he was pronounced dead at the University of Chicago Medical Center soon after. An interesting detail about the murder of Willie is that Tarantino from Buff City rapped about how BD started a war with NLMB and how they killed Willie. Just two days after the murder of Willie, No Limit would lose another member, this time a member from the same generation as Mad Max, Maneski, 
Mally and Crazy James, however this time as was not death row, this time it was no limits bitter and decade long beef with KTS and Pocket Town that was the reason behind the murder. On August 14, 2019, only two days after the murder of Willie, Magic from NLMB was shot and killed on the exact same block as Willie. Magic was standing next to a car together with a 30-year-old man in the 7800 block of South Essex Avenue. In the back seat of the car they were standing next to a 26-year-old woman. Suddenly, a dark-colored vehicle drove by and someone inside started open fire on the group. Magic, whose real name was Kenneth Summers, only 26 year old, was shot multiple times all over the body, including the head, and was tragically pronounced dead at the hospital. The 26 year old woman was shot in the leg and the 30 year old man in the arm. Both were taken to the hospital where their condition was stabilized. According to the police report, the one responsible for this murder were KTS Stray just like I stated in the video about the death of BD from death row. There is one other suspect listed in the report, the name is invisible but according to sources it was Rio G from Pocket Town. However, which of them pulled the trigger remains unknown. A crazy detail surrounding this murder is that only three days after the murder, KT Estray was found having intercourse with an unknown female in the same car used on the hit. The same vehicle was also used in a shooting in Drill City BNC. As usual, the mocking had no limits on social media after the murder, not least by Savo from Death Row, who was on house arrest at the time. He shared a post about magic and wrote, pack after pack. Pharaoh actually commented on this post, he wrote, LOL keep it up when you back out here, in which Savo responded with, get movement, next week. Magic was the older brother of Flock from NLMB who was after the murder hinted that Magic was set up, by who is unknown. However, a month later, after murders, shootings, and taunts by Savo and Death Row, no limit would get their revenge on Death Row. On September 9, 2019, NLMB would get revenge for Scooter by killing one of his alleged killers, Savo. There are a lot of rumors and speculations surrounding this murder, mostly false, especially one theory that says it was the Latin Kings or Wacko World that killed Savo, which is completely false. Much of this theory is based on the fact that Arrow from Death Row got killed on a hit by an innocent bystander from the Latin King neighborhood who was licensed to carry. Some therefore made the connection that Arrow tried to get revenge for Savo. This is a made up rumor from Reddit, really based on nothing. I will now give you the real story and the real killer who is still alive and free. Savo, only 19 years old at the time, was standing outside his house in the 10,600 block of South Avenue O which is territory belonging to Bucktown, 
Spanish vice lords. At this time, and most of the year 2019, Savo was on house arrest which is why he was standing outside his house. Suddenly, a car rolled through the street and a man inside the car started shooting towards Savo who would quickly realize that he was shot. Savo was rushed to the University of Chicago Medical Center where he was tragically pronounced dead due to gunshot wounds to the abdomen and leg. For me it is very clear that NLMB was behind the murder, I have sources from both sides who have also confirmed this. In addition, Fa 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 from Buff City have stated several times on Instagram stories, and in live streams, that No Limit only has one body on death row, which refers to Savo. I will now reveal the alleged killer of Savo and this information has never been revealed nor known before. The man who allegedly pulled the trigger was Lil 40 from NLMB. However who was with him on the hit is unknown but I have heard of rumors that Diesel and JDOT from NLMB was present. I have also heard that GMEBE was on the hit which is supposedly the real reason why Death Row are into it with South Sea. Previously many also thought that Lil Hot from Drench Gang was present since he was on FaceTime arguing with Savo just days before he got killed, but this is false. Solo, now you say anything, I will spit on your little ass. Like, literally, on my daddy grave. Like, spit on your ass. Hey, hold this car. Hold that car, don't get scared, boy. Don't get scared, boy. Hey, look, don't get scared. Okay. You can't even face the club in the middle of the street, sweetie. Don't get scared, boy. I'm in the wedding. Hey, it's gonna be. Okay. Hey, look, they gonna hide your memorial right there. There are several interesting details surrounding the murder of Savo. Firstly, since Savo had been on house arrest several months before he was killed, he spent much of that time on the internet, steady teething with no limit members such as Pharaoh, Diesel, Loss and Velo. He was constantly dissing no limit in his songs, he was mocking Mad Max in videos with Jayla from Death Row and made several disrespectful posts on Facebook about Millie from Del Mob and LMB who tragically passed away of cancer in July 2019. The disrespect from Savo knew no limits and you can imagine that no limit was really happy when they finally got him out of the way. As usual, the tables always turn, now it was no limits turn to mock. In January 2020, on the exact day Arrow from Death Row was killed, which we will come to later, Pharaoh from No Limit made a very disrespectful post where he wrote, I'll dig Savo up and smack him with his house arrest band. Pharaoh also mocked Pharaoh in the song, Real Facts, where he rapped, You're going to die if you keep saying names, just look at Lil Savo, he got changed. Muwap from Drench Gang also made several disrespectful posts, on April 1, 2022, he wrote, Savo just came back, psych, April Fools, and in 2020, he wrote, My OG think it's asthma why I'm coughing, girl I'm smoking Savo. In 2019, Arrow from Death Row made a post on Facebook where he wrote, Lil Dotty got left next to a garbage can, in which Diesel from NLMB responded with, and Savo died in front of his mother. These are just a few examples of the mocking from NLMB, there is a lot more which I will show in the slideshow. A member I haven't seen dissing Savo is surprisingly the killer himself, Lil 40, also known as the Kruger. 
Many people know Lil 40 due to him being a rapper, he has several music videos with over 200,000 views on YouTube and even got songs together with G Herbo. He is actually a very talented rapper, he is good at what he does and is still doing it today. The only slight dissing Lil 40 has done was to name one of his songs to Nightmare on Main Street, which he did together with Diesel and J.Dot from NLMB, however he did not mock Savo nor Death Row in the song. For those of you who don't know, Main Street is another name for Death Row 085. However, in 2020, he was close to losing his life when he was shot by Fa 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 from Buff City slash Death Row, most likely an attempt to get revenge for Savo. Fa 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 even admitted to this on a live stream with Pharaoh from Drench Gang, where he stated that he shot the only member from NLMB who ever did anything to Death Row. Not too long ago, Fa 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 uploaded a story where it said, the only took one from the row and the dude who did it felt hot shit, almost got his head taken off from his shoulders. Lil 40 is now living in Atlanta according to his Facebook page. These niggas 12. These niggas 12 for real. What they is, Savo? Rats. Rats, just like what dude Rats. is? Like Max. Maxi packs. Max the rat. Max the rat. Oh. You want to do that? No, I ain't gonna okay. say nothing because the blogs on your don't shit. Say fact, you got you got Chicago C88 on your shit on phone. They fuck around. <laughs> Facts, they fuck around it. Uh, book I dumb it. <laughs> you know that, cuz, cuz. No, cuz. You you a, you the troll king. <laughs> know that? Who did something to me? Who did something to your buddy? Yeah, though. Now, I'm merch. No, I'm not merch. talking about. I'm not merch. talking about. Uh, what's the name? I'm talking about merch. other shorty. The one y'all. The one y'all merch on. Who? The one who gang y'all is. Little Sabo. Oh. <laughs> uh, why are you dropping names, cuz? Ah, you right, cuz. You right, cuz. I like how you stop doing that like you don't know. Hey, you be really killing me with all this, like, hey, hey, bro, stop playing games like that. Where I was like, hey, cuz, you really be blowing me with that. Hey, you niggas is innocent. Y'all innocent, spicy. Hey, I merch don't count right now, man. Don't cap your ass, No way. On Buff Grab, I shot the only man. On Buff Grab, I shot the only man who ever did something to us. On Look Good, what the fuck you talking about? Under this lab, we don't know y'all. Yo ass, we chased your ass. Your ass threw shorty in the way. You threw shorty in the way, and his ass caught it. I don't even know what you're talking about. On Buff Grab, ass. We never did none of that shooting police shit. Clown ass, nigga. Yo little ass. Yo 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 ass. He was also shot by police in August 2015 when he was only 14 years old. 
Police officers responded to a report of gunfire in the 8900 block of South Escanaba Avenue. Police stated that they saw two males riding bicycles, the 14-year-old boy, who was identified by his mother as Derwan Curry, also known as Savo and his 19-year-old brother. Police stated that Derwan ran away from the officers when they asked him what he had in his pocket. They followed him and he pulled out a weapon. When they asked Savo to stop and put it down, he refused, which led to one of the officers shooting him once which hit Savo in both of his legs. He was later taken to Kummer Children's Hospital where he was stabilized. Savo's older brother was questioned and released. However, another brother, Donzel, was arrested after the police said he attempted to enter the scene. According to police, Donzel allegedly punched a police officer in the head and damaged a vehicle after he was told he could not enter the scene. He was charged with aggravated battery to a peace officer and three other misdemeanor charges. This just shows how much of a hothead Savo really was, he was like a light version of Lil Jojo. For those of us who follow the Chicago drill scene, you can almost believe that Savo begged for getting shot. He even dropped his location to No Limit members on social media. Dropping your location is a way to taunt your enemies, knowing they won't come through and then clown them for it. However, there are times, like with Savo and Lil Jojo, where the opposition actually does slide, slide to kill. In a side note, Pharaoh and his cousin G. Pharaoh were locked up during the murder of Savo. They got locked up on unknown charges in mid-August 2019 and were released a month later. Revenge would be sweet for death row though and it would come quickly. On December 4th, 2019, death row would slide together with Black Mob and kill G. Dotty from NLMVABK. G. Dotty, whose real name was Markle Sheard, was walking in an alley listening to his AirPods in the 7500 block of South Colfax Avenue, which is Black Mob territory. Suddenly a vehicle pulled up and someone inside started shooting towards G. Dotty who instantly fell to the ground. One of the shooters in the car, Arrow from Death Row, then jumped out of the car and fired a whole clip into Dotty with his Glock 23. Arrow himself has stated that Dotty was shot over 19 times all over the body. The second shooter on the hit is rumored to have been Michi from Black Mob, who is also rumored to have been the actual killer of Mad Max from NLMB not Hellrel. Dotty, only 21 years old, was tragically pronounced dead on the scene. Dotty Road was created by No Limit and ABK to honor his memory. Black Mob and Death Row were very tight around this time, Arrow, Fa Fa Fa, J Money, Savo and BD would often hang out on Black Mob, especially with Michi. Just weeks after the murder, Michi mocked Dotty by writing, Dotty Road, followed by a laughing emoji. Michi made two other posts on Facebook which was interesting to me, just three days after the murder he wrote, I scoobs and shells, I know you see this, and, sorry lord, it's either kill or be killed. Cisse from Black Mob uploaded a story containing the smoke emoji, Death Row made a post saying, you be on the 9 but you from the 5, we spinning them both, Dion from Death Row uploaded a post where he wrote, and Ferrero I'm smoking, Dottie on the jump out got flamed up, and Fa 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 have made a series of disrespectful posts mocking Dottie which I will soon show you. A week before G Dottie's murder, No Limit lost another member, Breezy Lord. Many, including myself, thought that Death Row was behind the murder since they claim it but according to sources it was MTG who got him. This makes a lot more sense since Breezy, 32 was walking in Merrillville when someone walked up to him and shot him multiple times in the head.
You could actually see a pattern with all these killings. Death Row usually targets the younger members, since they are the ones who are into it with them, while Pocket Town, KTS, Lakeside and MTG usually target the older members who they have been into it with a very long time. Don't get me wrong, Death Row has also killed older members such as Freddy and Zello, it's on site no matter who you see, but you could often hear older members from all over the city saying they don't even know any of the shorties from the enemy side. For example, Cairo has stated several times that he isn't even into it with the shorties from the other side since he doesn't even know them. Takeapone also said this in his story not too long ago, and what he said was very interesting. Even though he is just 25 years of age, he feels like one of the old heads now. If I remember correctly, it stemmed from a post about Lil Reggie from Jaro City getting locked up for a murder, in which Tay said that he doesn't even recognize the enemies anymore. This is crazy to me since 25 isn't even a high age, but it also shows how young they were when they were running around wild in the streets, and what they've been through in just a few years that most people don't go through or witness in a lifetime. We are now entering the year 2020, a very eventful year, not least for Pharaoh who allegedly caught his first body, only at the age of 16. However, we will start with a lost death row took less than a week into the new year, era who was rumored to have killed G. Dottie as I told you about earlier. On January 5th, 2020, Arrow and Fat Lord from Death Row were riding around in a turquoise SUV when they made a U-turn at the end of the street and parked in the block. Both got out of the vehicle armed with 9mm handguns and approached a man by the name of Eric Garcia who was standing on the street together with his 24-year-old neighbor. Eric and his neighbor were just standing there talking with each other when Fat Lord and Arrow ran up and started letting off shots. The neighbor ran from the shooting but was struck in the arm and fell to the sidewalk as Eric ran into the ground and was shot multiple times. However, after falling to the ground, Eric somehow managed to take out his own 40 caliber handgun and return fire at the two men who attacked him, striking Fat Lord in the arm and lower back and fatally wounding Arrow, who fell to the ground. Eric was pronounced dead at the University of Chicago Medical Center, and Arrow was pronounced dead at the scene, According to prosecutors who said police recovered 19 9mm shell casings and 10 40 caliber shell casings from the scene. Fat Lord managed to take off in the SUV, which pulled up 8 minutes later at Trinity Hospital, where an unknown person took Fat Lord out of the SUV and placed him in a wheelchair. Fat Lord was still wearing the same clothing, including distinctive yellow shoes that he was seen wearing on footage from multiple surveillance cameras that captured the shooting. Fat Lord was at the time serving two years of probation after pleading guilty to aggravated unlawful use of a weapon in 2018, according to court records. In that case, Fat Lord admitted to storing a loaded gun in a vehicle compartment that was found during a traffic stop earlier that year. Since Fat Lord was the only one who survived and was one of the aggressors, he has now been charged with first-degree murder in the fatal shooting of the concealed carry holder, Elvis Garcia, 39, and a count of felony murder in the death of 17-year-old Michael Portis, also known as Arrow, who Cook County prosecutors said also attacked Garcia but died in the battle. Fat Lord is still in Cook County awaiting trial. Fat Lord did not snitch in this case as many have speculated, including myself. He was charged due to clear evidence against him. This was the second part of the story of No Limit Pharaoh from Drench Gang. Part 3 coming soon. I send my condolences to all the families who have lost loved ones to gang violence in Chicago.